so hi everybody uh, welcome back uh, again to today's session so in previous video we have already uh, discussed uh, the architecture of dynatrix sas and dynatrix manage so in this video we are specifically uh, going to talk about the additional components uh, that that we uh, have in the architecture which is our active gate so if if you go ahead and if you have uh, seen the previous video of uh, uh, the explanation about the dynatrix managed uh, uh, architecture so that there is a uh, component called as active gate right so what what exactly is this active gate so we have this active gate in your managed environment as well as uh, in your saas environment also we have this as uh, embedded active gates right in both of the environments we have this embedded active gate so what what exactly is an active gate uh, why uh, why is it so like we we require an active gate so these these are the questions that we will uh, come across in today's session right so i'll quickly go through what what exactly is the active gate so i'll i'll just drop a link for all of these documentations in the comment section below you can you can have a look as well as if you need uh, any more things that uh, you feel like i should discuss you can uh, put that uh, also in the comment section so active gate is basically a, a kind of a proxy between one agent and uh, the dynatrace server right um, so active gate depends uh, basically it is deployed in two models which is uh, your uh, windows based active gate and linux based active gate so uh, what exactly is the proxy why why do we need a proxy in between right so the whole sole point behind an active gate is that i just want to uh, securely transfer the uh, the data that i have from my dynatrix one agent to the dynatrix server so previously active gate was also known as security gateway right um, as we can see uh, the active gate was also known as security gateway right so uh, right up I'll, i'll also go ahead in the architectural aspect uh, as well and down the line but uh, just just to give in uh, you know it it is just um, for the sake of uh proxy uh, it it just acts as a proxy between one agent and the dynatrix server right so this this is the architecture that i have right so uh, basically we have two two kinds of um, active gates uh, we have an environment active gate and we have a cluster active gate so if you are going ahead with dynatrix managed right then then there comes in the cluster active gate but if you if you have the saas solution so you don't uh, you will not be getting this cluster active gate you will just be getting the environment active gate right so in the next video i'll be discussing about uh, why why do we need cluster active gate or why do we need environment active gate and i'll be discussing the differences between both of them but for the time being we'll just uh, stick to the active gates right so we we have these active gates so these active gates why exactly do i need an active gate right so basically if you can see from the architectural perspective right so my one agent sends the data to my active gates right so different active gates perform different kinds of activities uh, but we will discuss that in the next video but uh, basically just to route the data that is coming in either from the agents or from a Uh, agentless monitoring or mobile uh, monitoring or any any kind of external content i've just highlighted that so if any data which is coming in from the agents or from the external content the active gates just simply takes all of that data and routes it to your dynatrix server right so why exactly do i need to install an active gate so what what is the purpose behind um, installing an active gate or or why do i need an active gate right so if you are if you are uh, looking out to monitor your cloud environments right monitor virtualizations such as aws uh, azure vmware then then you have to have an active gate for that right if you are if you want to limit the number of uh, firewall changes right then then you have to have an active gate because if if you uh, will not have an active gate then all of these one agents need an outbound communication to your uh, dynatrace server right 
and you cannot go ahead uh, and if your data center is in uh, different location and your uh, Dynatrace uh, server is at different location, then you cannot just punch in holes into your firewall um, very often. Right? So that is why we just we just install a single active gate and we punch a single hole in the firewall which which makes the connection to the Dynatrace server. So if, if you want to reduce uh, the amount of uh, uh, changes that you are going to do in your firewall, right? So that is why you need an active gate for that. As well as if you want to uh, do the load balancing for an agent. So when we talk about a bigger environment, right? When we talk about uh, the environment which has uh, kind of a large deployment, um, more than 100 plus agents, right? Then in that case for load balancing, we require an active gate, right? So that, that is also suggested if you have a large environment, then the active gate is must in order for the agents to have a load balancing on them. Right. Also, the active gate lowers the amount of bandwidth consumption by 30% uh, 30 So, what, what exactly it does is, it bundles all of that data right, coming in from one agent and sends it as a single package to the database server. Right. So, I'll, I'll, I'll put all of this in the description box below but for the timing, these are the things. right? So let's just take uh, high level points, basically to route the traffic, monitor the cloud environment, uh, monitor the remote technologies with plugin. Yeah, uh, so the active gate also, also executes the plugins or basically we call it as extension. So you can, you can uh, uh, have, there are a lot of extensions available, you can use that and some extensions are on active gate. And if you are willing to do an uh, synthetic monitoring of your intranet URLs, which is uh, your private synthetic monitoring, then also you require an active gate. If you want to monitor your mainframes, then you need to have an active gate. So uh, here are plenty, plenty of other uh, uh, points why why you need an active gate, right? So I'll I'll put uh, this in the description below. You can have a look, right? So high level points which I've already discussed on the top. So it is more granular and more detailed, right? So I'll, I'll just quickly go ahead and I'll show you how how we uh, do that or what, what are the benefits of that. So I can monitor my VMware, right? So all of my V centers, so I can have multiple V centers and I can monitor all of them. So this, this is my V center, right? I can go ahead and monitor my Azure environment. So I can have multiple Azure environments and I can go ahead and uh, configure all of those using an active gate. So I have my Azure, uh, AWS I've covered, I have, I have my Azure. So I can go ahead and configure my Azure as well. So this is this is the benefit uh, of the active gates that we have. So uh, do do check out the next video that I'm going to upload it tomorrow, uh, which, which will discuss about uh, both of the active gates, which is our environment active gate and cluster active gate. And why do we need both of them? Right. 